Then we'll continue on next with the, uh, we will open up the regular meeting then. Um, we uh, welcome to the regular meeting of the uh, Mesa Planning and Zoning Board for Wednesday, May 22, 2024. Uh, do I need to take roll call again or can we, uh, okay. <laughs> We'll take roll call again. Uh, I'm uh, Vice Chair uh, Pitcher. Uh, Vice Chair, or Chair Ayers is absent today. Uh, Board Member Crockett? Here. Uh, Board Member Peterson? Here. Board Member Montez? Here. Board Member Blakeman? Here. And Board Member Carpenter? Here. We uh, will start with a reading of, unless any of the items uh, Alex, do, do we have any items that are, are coming off of the consent agenda? Um, at this time, I don't believe we do. We have not okay. received any comment cards. Then we'll uh, move forward with the reading of the consent agenda uh, by uh, Board Member Peterson. Items on the consent agenda are PZ24076, minutes from the April 10, 2024 planning and zoning meeting. PZ24077, minutes from the April 22nd, 2024 planning and zoning public hearing. PZ24066, minutes from the April 24th, 2024 planning and zoning meeting. Item 3A, ZON 24-00019, PHX 062, District 6, within the 10,400 to 10,600 blocks of East Elliott Road and within the 10,400 block of East Mesquite Street, located south of Elliott Road and west of Signal Butte Road. Site plan review and special use permit. This request will allow for an indoor warehousing use. Recommendation is approval with conditions. Item 3B, ZON 24-00020, PHX 065. District 6 within the 10,300 to 10,700 blocks of East Pecos Road and within the 6,300 to 6,800 blocks of South 222nd Street, located north of Pecos Road and west of Signal Beat Road. Site plan review and two special use permits. This request will allow for an indoor warehousing use. Staff recommendation approval with conditions. Item 3C. ZON 24-00127, Mesa AZ, Eastmark Granger 250-4SC, with District 6, within the 10,600 block of East Williamsfield Road and the 6,000 block of South 222nd Street, located south of Williamsfield Road and west of Signal Beat Road. Site plan review and special use permit. This request will allow for a place of worship. Staff recommendation, approval with conditions. Item 4A. Proposed amendments, oh, this one is off, correct? Okay. So I, I, so I just changed the recommendation to, okay. And what was the date on that again? Okay. Proposed amendments to chapters 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 30, 31, 34, 32, 34, 86, and 87 of Title 11 of the Mesa City Code, also known as the Mesa Zoning Ordinance pertaining, but not limited to, accessory dwelling units, detached accessory buildings, and manufactured home park accessory structures. The recommendation is continuation to the June 26 Planning and Zoning Board meeting. Item 4B, proposed amendments to Chapter 5, 6, and 31 of Title 11 of the Mesa City Code, also known as the Mesa Zoning Ordinance pertaining to minor re revisions and technical updates, including but not limited to modifying figures, modifying land use tables to correct footnote references and correcting section references. Staff recommendation is adoption. Item 4C, Z123-00645, one seven five six East University District One within the seventeen hundred block of East University Drive and within the four hundred block of North Hall, located west of Gilbert Road and north of University Drive, rezoned from neighborhood commercial to multiple residential four, with a planned area development overlay and a site plan review. This request will allow for a multiple residence development. Staff recommendation approval with conditions. Item four D. ZON 23-00982, Dave Downing Associates Warehouse, District 4, 
within the 200 block of South Hibbert, located north of Broadway Road and west of Mesa Drive, rezoned from downtown business to and downtown residence to to downtown business to with the bonus intensity zone overlay, council use permit and major site plan modification. This request will allow for a warehouse development. Staff recommendation, approval with condition. Conditions. Item 5A, the landing at Falcon Field pre-plat. Within the 4600 to 4800 block of East McKellips Road, the 1700 to 2000 block of North 48th Street, and the 1700 to 2000 block of North 46th Street, located east of Greenfield Road and south of McKellips Road, rezoned from light industrial to light industrial with a planned area development overlay, site plan review, and revocation of a council use permit. This request will allow for an industrial development. Staff recommendation, approval with conditions. Thank you. Um, is, is there any further action we need to take on those? I, I noticed that a, a blue card came up. Is that? It was just the applicant. They're, they're available to speak if there's any questions on the general plan amendment. He's hoping not to speak. <laughs> That's a first. Thank you. <laughs> then, uh, then we'll proceed then with the, the public hearing. Oh, entertain a motion to approve it? Okay. Uh, then, then I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. <laughs> I will move that we approve the consent agenda that was so eloquently read by Board Member Peterson. I'm sorry? Did, did you want to speak on... No, back, back here. Vice Chair. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we'd have to pull it off. We're happy to talk to you after, though. You want me to pull it off? Okay. Well, we can pull that off. So what we'll do is we'll pull off uh, item um, ZON230982 from the consent agenda. And then the, the vote then... We'll, we'll modify your vote to uh, the consent agenda minus that one. Okay, and that, what agenda item was that? That was uh, 4D. 4D, okay. Then I move that we approve the consent agenda as read by Board Member Peterson minus agenda item 4B. Uh, is there a second? Or D. D is in dog. Is there, a, is there a second? I second. <laughs> then let's vote, please. The, the vote is unanimous, so we will proceed then with the uh, with 4D is in dog uh, at that presentation, and uh, then we've we've got one other presentation after that as well. Thank you, Vice Chair and Board Members. This is case ZON 23-00982 for the Dave Downing and Associates Warehouse. The request is a rezone from the Downtown Business 2 and Downtown Residence 2 District um, with, and Downtown Residence 2 to a Downtown Business 2 with a bonus intensity zone overlay. The request also includes a council use permit and a major site plan modification. The request will allow for the development of a warehouse. The site is located north of Broadway Road and west of Mesa Drive along Hibbert, as seen in the hatched area on the screen. The general plan character area is downtown and transit corridor. The downtown is for recognized as the governmental, cultural, financial, and entertainment center of the community. And the transit corridor encourages buildings to be brought close to the front property lines. It is also part of the Central Main Street area plan, um, specifically that transformation neighborhood. The intent there is to create a more unified mix of employment, commercial, and residential uses. 
the current zoning is um, split zoned with that downtown business two and downtown residential two um, with the request to rezone to the DB2 with the BIC overlay. Um, indoor warehousing and storage is a permitted use in the DB2 zoning district with the approval of a council use permit. Here is um, a current site photo looking southwest on Hibbert. The applicants plan on demolishing an existing warehouse and a portion of another warehouse on the site. Um, they will then um, plan on adding an over 11,000 square foot addition to that remaining warehouse for a total of over 22,500 square feet. Um, the site also includes a 2,400 square foot office use, which is located along Hibbert. Um, part of the BIZ request is to deviate from the required 15 foot setback along Hibbert to allow for that zero foot setback which is the current existing condition. Uh, the uh, 33 parking spaces are required on the site and 60 are proposed. And there are two accesses off of Hibbert. Um, additional requests within the BIZ include a reduction in the size of the landscape yards, required landscape material, and a reduction in certain um, foundation base. Uh, the north and northwest landscape yards are being reduced from the required 20 feet to a minimum of four feet, nine inches, but all of the planting requirements are being met along those, um, along those property lines. The southwest and south property lines are proposed to have a zero foot landscape uh, instead of the required 15 feet. Um, and those setbacks are, will have no plant material. Um, the foundation base is also reduced to five and a half feet instead of the 10 feet between the parking spaces on the building um, along that north elevation. Um, everywhere else, the foundation base is being met as well as all the planting um, materials required. And here, of course, you can see the landscape that is being proposed. Um, the BIZ is to allow for modifications to certain development standards um, in the zoning ordinance. Here is the table summarizing what is being proposed, um, which I have done in those previous slides. Uh, the BIZ includes the minimum front setback to match the existing, a reduction in required landscape yards, required landscape material, and certain um, areas of the foundation base. The, per the applicants, the justification for the BIZ request includes redevelopment of a previously distressed site um, within a half mile of the light rail stop. Um, in addition, many parking landscapes um, areas are oversized and additional foundation base is being provided um, where possible. Uh, per the submitted site plan, they've also identified prior priority parking that's designated for low emission vehicles um, and carpool spaces as well. The proposed project is required to meet the um, CUP requirement findings in section 1176. Um, as the proposed project is consistent with the goals and objectives of the downtown character area, transit corridor, and the central Main Street plan, um, by providing appropriate infill development and redevelopment of a site helping to contribute to the quality of the surrounding area. Uh, the proposed project fits the location, size, design, and characteristics because the design allows for that full vehicular egress around the building, um, and the warehousing and vehicular portions of the site are set back from the street um, where that office is actually located instead, creating that more pedestrian environment. Um, the proposed project will not be injurious or detrimental to adjacent properties. As per the narrative, the site was previously acting as a junkyard, which has sent, since been cleaned up by the new property owners um, who want to make it a safer and more pleasant um, for the surrounding community. Um, adequate public facilities and infrastructure are available to the proposed project with proper trash enclosures and parking being added as well. Here are the elevations that were presented to the design review board on May 14th. The board had minor comments that the applicant is working um, on with the city. Um, the east elevation that you're seeing here is what you'll see on Hibbert. Um, then we'll have that south elevation, the west which is in the rear, and that north elevation there as well. The applicants notified property owners within 1,000 feet as well as HOAs and registered neighborhoods. Um, several neighbors did reach out to the applicant with questions regarding some of the um, walls and lighting, which the applicants have reached out 
back out to as well. Um, overall, staff finds that the proposed project complies with the Mesa 2040 general plan, complies with Chapter 69 of the MZO for site plan review, complies with Chapter 21 of the MZO for a BIZ overlay, and complies with the review criteria for the council use permit outlined in Section 1170-6 of the MZO. Um, staff recommends approval with conditions and happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Uh, should we open the questions for the board now and then go to public? Um, why, yeah, why don't we just go to the, the public hearing for now? So I, I have one blue card, uh, Michael Wilson. And uh, if you can come up here, uh, introduce yourself to give us your address. And Thank you. Uh, my name is Michael Wilson, and uh, I own and operate uh, the business that's next door at 260 South Hibbert. Uh, our name of our business is Air Spension LLC. We go by Air Baggett is our DBA. Um, and uh, we were really happy to see that uh, something new was coming. We bought the property and the business from the same owner that, they, that Dave Downing bought the, uh, um, that building from. And we were pleased, very pleased. I, we've had a great uh, relationship with them. And I have gotten the information that, uh, you, you're the architect, right? The planning staff. Planning, oh, okay. So the architect sent over the information about the, uh, uh, the build out. I have one major concern and, and it's, and I, I wanna address this with the Downings. Um, Jason has been my point of contact there. But um, I specifically, uh, my biggest concern is that the separation of the line, so our line, the, the property line goes directly from the outside of our building straight out to the street. And we have a very limited space <clears throat> to work. We, because we do steel manufacturing, we, we also ship a lot of products, import a lot of products. We have, we have to have a dumpster, a full 40 yard dumpster, and we have a, uh, a large roll off container for steel. And we have also um, uh, barrel or drums for our uh, machine uh, cutoffs. So all of that stuff has to be stored. Historically, the, the previous owner had all the space, that junkyard that she mentioned, <laughs> she's right, they cleaned up the junkyard, but he also had all the space. The concern for me is that we have service vehicles that have to come in along that property line, or right now they currently come in in this, in this sort of the, cent, the place between the two buildings, and they have to come to the back and back in so they can de deliver uh, gas for our welding and uh, um, oxygen for our laser cutting, and then all of our steel gets delivered back to the end where we bring it into the building. It's the only entrance into the building other than the, the docks through the warehouse. So. Um, with this separation, my concern in the plan is that there is a wall that's being proposed along the property line, a six-foot um, uh, wall. Uh, I'm assuming it's going to be concrete or, or block wall. Um, and that will, that will severely restrict our ability to get in and out and also have our dumpsters in there that we need. We have no other space to put those. We have zero other space except to put them outside on the parking lot. And um, so I had, I had hoped that they would do this plan, put it moving the, the, uh, the fence to protect their stuff to the back end so that we could at least share that central access or at least give us enough space in there. But apparently in the, in the plan, it looks like there's a wall that goes right along it, and, and that's a big concern of mine. And the other thing that that does is it, it historically that, the, that property, there was a dispute several years ago about the fire lane, the fire lane going through. And I noticed in the plan, they have a fire lane for them, but we have no fire lane. So they're effectively taking away our, the fire uh, truck's ability to get to the back building. At, you know, because there's no exit out of there. It's an in and nowhere else to go if that, if that wall is there. So I, I guess what I, I'm not disputing and I definitely don't want to take away what, what the Downings want to do and I don't, but I, I am concerned about those things and about the, uh, specifically about the fire lane and also about our access to be able to get trucks through there with that. There's a significant space there 
um, the way they've drawn it up. I, I'd like to work with the Dowdings, but I saw this plan, this meeting was going on, so I thought it would at least say it, so it would go on record. Um, and I honestly don't know what the process is, but I thought that I would at least bring it up so that it's, if, if it's something that wasn't discussed, it at least has to be, you know, something discussed. So. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, how do, should we have the planner address this? Yeah, I, and, and first of all, is the applicant here? Uh, Vice Chair, Board Members, I don't believe that they're here. I don't believe they're online either. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure if anybody is online, if you could unmute yourself. I don't believe that they are. I did not receive any online comment cards um, to speak um, from applicants, so. Emily, before we have you up, um, can we have Mr. Wilson come back? We've got a couple of questions yeah, for you. Sure. Hey, Mr. Wilson. So I'm trying to understand your situation. So have you been using a part of the neighbor's property as, as your access? Do you have to drive on to the to the neighbor's property you, you, and to you, be able to? Yeah, right. So there's a, there's a line. Yeah, I mean, you can see it by the by the difference in the yeah. concrete, but that line is driven, driven, drawn in that plan. So we have our, our dumpsters over here, and then um, if a truck comes, they have to kind of go around the dumpster to get back there Okay. right now. Now, we can do things to, to minimize that, right? We have kind of, to be fair, we have spread out a little bit more than I wouldn't expect that in, when they're doing what they do. But, but even if our dumpsters are all the way over to the furthest point they can go, we still have space that I, with a wall there and trying to bring a truck back in there with steel on it, I think would be a, a nightmare. And have you have you been able to discuss this yet with the owner of the no, property? No, I sent an email over to Jason, so hopefully okay. we can discuss it. I just don't want to miss the opportunity to put on record if if there was an opportunity to. Okay, to appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Emily, if we can have you come back. Thank you, Vice Chair and Board Members. I'm going to um, navigate back to our site plan here. Um, okay. Um, I was under the understanding that the applicants had talked to to the property owner to the south because I knew this question had come up. Um, so it does look like on the site plan, if you can kind of follow my cursor, um, that's really just the property line there. There actually is no wall to the south. Um, that's going to be open. And um, there is, so far, there is a shared access agreement um, that just hasn't been recorded with the county yet that will allow access to, to both the sites. Um, so there is no wall for the south. Um, I don't know exactly about where your dumpster is located um, and if having no wall is still going to work um, for, for your circulation, but there, there is no wall to the south and there also is a shared access agreement. Um, one of the conditions of approval is to get that recorded. Um, I believe the only addition down here is... Oh, I it, but, uh, yeah. okay. There is no wall. <laughs> because I spoke to the architect, he said there was, there was a possibility there would be a wall. No wall. Okay. I talked with him as well. Yeah. Oh, great. Sorry about that. Yeah. Sorry for the confusion. Okay. That's great. I, I also... Well, Emily, are you, are you, if you're finished, we'll have. Do you have a question for, for Emily? For Emily, yeah. okay. Emily, on that, so on the far uh, coming off of Hibbert, there they have gates, but then does the gate continue across the Mr. Wilson's property to the south? Is there a continuous gate, or otherwise, why is there a gate shown on the plan if, it, if I, there's no wall? I don't believe that it continues. It it looks like on the site plan it does end at the the property line of the proposed Cause, project. Because there's a gate there today, right? Is there a like correct? A continuous I believe there gate? is a gate yeah. on that side, and this one is just replacing it. Okay, gotcha. And and then is uh, the the well, I guess if there's no wall, so when fire looked at the fire lane, they didn't see any issues with with causing any additional risk to the adjacent property owners because of that fire lane. Yeah, uh, board that... member Peterson, I, be I believe fire did sign off on everything they did review um, the project as proposed. But but what there's a joint access agreement you said. There, um, 
uh, Vice Chair Pitcher, um, I do have a shared access agreement um, already. It hasn't been reported with the county, but that is part of the conditions of approval that that be recorded. But wouldn't he be a party to that? I did, and I did sign, but I, I, I was not aware. I thought it was the front end that I was signing the joint access, that entry point, which is like right here. Are you talking about the, the actual gate? Yeah, right here, this entry point. I was under the, the because of the gate situation that you raised was of also of, so the gate, the gate situation was also of question of mine because if it's truly no wall and there's no and there's open access, why wouldn't that gate be across, either centered or I mean we could put another gate there so then we have two gates opening into the same space. I don't know what the point of that was if there was not going to be a wall, and so. Um, but I thought that the shared agreement was over here on this part right here. I did not know the agreement. If, if, if I look at Street Viewer right now, it has a gate there now today, right? And then it continues through? It's a gate that's one gate that slides open. And obviously, they, they want to do this because they, that gate slides open into their, into their side. And, and uh, I understand they want a swinging gate. And I'm cool with that. But... Um, we can put another gate, but they're, if they're truly going to share access of that center strip, yeah. if we're going to do that, I mean, I don't have a problem with that at all. You, you would just need to have a continual gate on your side, so, so we it's just all put our secure. own gate. Yeah. I don't care. We'll put another gate just like it. I, I'll work with Dave if, or with Jason yeah. if. Well, and, and I think that's the key is that we need yeah. to see where that shared access is, and, and if you could if you could do that and, and work with, yeah. with planning to see where that is, I think that'll solve your problem. Um, Vice Chair Pritchard, apparently the architect is online. I think we're looking to see if we can get him led into the meeting here, the architect for the project. Okay. Can I ask my other question? <coughs> you got one more chance. <laughs> so the other thing that in the plan here from the architect was that um, we have a power line that comes to our building that runs under the new part of their, where they're going to add building. And so the, uh, Jason sent me, the, Jason Downing sent me a, a note saying that we're going to have to pay $45,000 to move the power line to be above, above the ground. And I, I'm like... Who, who's the we? Me. Okay. That, that I'm going to have to pay, that's my portion, because it's power to my building. And it's been there, you know, I, I, when, I bought, when I bought the building and the, and the business, it, the power was just there. So now, because they want to expand, I'm going to have to pay forty-five thousand dollars to move the power lines. That, for me, it, 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 there's no return on that for me. It's just pure expense. That's our issue. Yeah, I'm. I'm afraid that we can't do anything about that. I. I, I think you know more about power than I do. Uh, you're. It's City of Mesa Power, correct? Yes. I would contact the City of Mesa Department to see if there's an electrical designer you could speak with about that. In, in my experience, not with the city of Mesa, but with another utility, whenever a private developer comes in, they have to make sure that everybody who's down the line, so to speak, continues to receive what they had at no expense of them. So that, that's how our utility practices. I don't know how the city of Mesa works, but okay. I would assume that that would be the case. Okay. Um, I, I, I don't know that they can force that expense on you, but... Okay. Yeah. All, right. All right. Well, I'll advise. Just brought it up. All right, I appreciate you coming out. Um, are there any other? You know, I'll, I'll close. Are there any other comments? Anybody else? That, any other blue cards that we have on on this one? Okay, then I'll I'll go ahead and close the public hearing. I'll open the uh, the hearing of the the board. Are, are there any other questions or concerns that haven't been answered on this one? Did the architect ever get on? Yeah, hey, I don't, did Kara. we ever get in? Okay. Hi, can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. Oh, barely. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can Hello? hear you. Can you increase? Hi, this is Sarah yeah, yeah, I'm the architect with Kenzie Architects. We're the ones working on the project. I want to confirm that there is no, uh, currently there is no uh, fence uh, uh, on the south side of the property. And regarding the two gates, they, they mean to just uh, have a different control of access for both properties so that the Dave Downing can close the property when they need to through the gate and the neighbor to the south can do the same through a different, a different, uh, a different gate. 
Uh, and I believe there is a shared access agreement that has been signed between the two. Uh, so I hope that that kind of answers this. Thank I'm just reiterating what Emily mentioned as well. I th why don't we have have Emily come back, and if there's any other, um, you know, if there's anything else you want to address, and then then we'll we'll close the the public hearing side, and then uh, open it up to the board. Uh, Vice Chair, uh, members of the board, Evan Balmer, Principal Planner of City of Mesa, just really quick on you, you the utility question. Uh, there's on-site utility overhead lines, and then there's uh, lines on the frontage. The property owner needs to underground the on-site uh, power lines for the expansion. The lines on Hibbert is an ongoing conversation that we're, we're working through that. Just as a quick update on that. Just a quick question. It appears that the power lines on Hibbert are overhead and then they feed the service drop to the Hibbert property, the, the property in question, I should say, is overhead as well. Right. But I don't see where the property to the south is served off of that. I don't, when I look at a Google Street View, which is only as good as the picture. Yeah. yeah. But. It's going right over the wall. Okay. There, there are still some, um, Vice Chair Board Member Carpenter, there are still some, some ongoing conversations on how all of that works. It's an older part of town in the, the electrical service there is a little um, unique. So those are ongoing conversations that we are aware of and we're working through. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Em Emily, is there anything else you want to um, sum up? Uh, uh, Vice Chair uh, Pr uh, Pitcher, not unless you guys have any additional questions. Then I'll go ahead and close the, uh, the public hearing and I'll open it up for the, any uh, questions or comments from the board. If none, then, then I'll recommend that uh, someone make a motion. I will be happy to do that. Um, I move that we approve agenda item 4D, which is case ZON 23-00982, Dave Downing Associates Warehouse in District 4, within the 200 block of South Hibbert, West Side, located north of Broadway, Broadway Road and west of Mesa Drive, a rezone from downtown business to and downtown residents two to downtown business two with a bonus intensity zone overlay, a council use permit and major site plan modification. This request will allow for a warehouse development. The staff recommendation is approval with conditions. Is there a second? Second. Then let's vote please. We have a vote of five to one, and um, the motion passes. So we'll go ahead and uh, move forward then on the next item uh, on the agenda, which is a, um, again, the landing at Falcon. And uh, we need, do we need a presentation for this, or are we just gonna proceed You ahead? just need to declare the public hearing open for the minor general plan amendment. Then I, will pr then I will open the public hearing for that minor uh, general plan amendment. Are there any comments? Are there any comments, any blue cards? Then we will close okay. the public hearing. Uh, do, do we need to take a vote on this or? You will need to take a vote on both 6A and 6B. You can entertain motions now if you want, unless there's board discussion or other blue cards. If, if there's no discussion, we'll, we'll uh, proceed then uh, with a, uh, I'll entertain a motion then. On for 6A and 6B. I'll look for you. Could, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll, are you volunteering? Yeah. I just have to say right, a motion to approve blah, 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 blah. Yep, that's okay. pretty much it, although the blah, blah, blah okay. part you actually have to say. <laughs> is all in favor? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, a motion to approve 6A ZON 24-00346 GP minor amendment for the landing of Falcon Field District 2 within the 4600 to 4800 block of East McKellips Road 
the 1700 to 2000 block of North 48th Street and the 1700 to 2000 block of North 46th Street, located east of Greenfield Road and South McKellips Road, minor general plan amendment, <coughs> changing the character area designation from mixed use activity to employment, staff recommendation adoption, and 6B, item 6B, ZON 23-00653, the landing of Falcon Field District 2 within the 4600 to 4800 of East McKellips Road, the 1700 to 2000 block of North 48th Street and the 1700 to 2000 block of North 46th Street, located east of Greenfield Road and south of McKellips Road, rezoned from light industrial to light industrial with a planned area development overlay, site plan review, and revocation of council use permit. This request will allow for an additional development, staff recommendation, approval with conditions. Are there any seconds? I'll second the motion. Please vote. The, the motion passes unanimously. Uh, are there any other matters that need to come before the board? Uh, Vice Chair Pitcher, the only thing I would remind the board of is the uh, uh, board member appreciation breakfast that's coming up. Um, I believe you've all received a notification for that breakfast. So especially for those who are turning out, like board member Crockett at the end of June, it is the end of June, um, it'd be really nice for you if you all had that opportunity to come in and um, hear thank you from the city for all the hard work that you do. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you all there. Uh, if I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn our public, our public meeting today. Any second? Second. Please vote. I guess we don't vote. There we go. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you. I'm going to run out. I'll see you guys. Okay. <laughs>